There's a clue in there, and it's not the shoes. Sean Cowan, you're a journalist. How do you become a collector of this? When I was a little kid, I went to my first game at about age seven and uh, picked up the budget after the game. I well, kept my budget after the game and put it aside and since then I've kept the budget every week since and kind of expanded from there. The football budget. That game day fixture is now glossy and coloured. And among all the chat and stats is this. Sean Cowan writes a column about what turns him on. Football memorabilia. The collecting thereof. Where did you get that wonderful piece of, let me say, moth-eaten... Stay jumper. It is Moth Eaton, uh, a, a, a Subiaco player from the 1950s named uh, Jeff Smith. He had it in his in a briefcase in his shed, I believe, or in an old case in his shed, and it got attacked by the moths. And, and I met him, I think last year, might have been the year before, and um, I bought it from him. And then I uh, spent quite a bit of time framing it and researching the details of the game he wore it in. Was that a Victoria State game for WA? It or wasn't. Uh, back in those days we, uh, or Western Australia, often played against a visiting VFL team, especially if there was a carnival on, so that the first 18 was visiting somewhere, uh, 1950, they were in Brisbane, and uh, Western Australia's second 18 played against South Melbourne who came over for a practice series and Jeff played in those two games and uh, I think he, was, he kicked four goals in one game and two in the other, so he, he had a pretty good run. These are my spare budgets, yep. um, back to well, the 50s, I suppose. Um, he'd be in some of these, 59. So you've been collecting these ever since? Ever since 85. How do you get them? I mean, you um, weren't even born when these were... No, no, right. I wasn't even close to born, thankfully. Um, picked them up from people who have kept them since and have had them in their sheds and have had them uh, in cupboards and boxes and God knows what. Are they hard to find? Very hard to find these days. Um, unfortunately, the number of people who tell me, oh, I kept every one of those from the 1940s well, onwards, throw them, throw them out yesterday or last week, and of course it really means they throw them out six months or ten now, years ago. This <laughs> stunning, stunning thing, where did that come from? I picked that up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's probably a bit too young to be worth much, and unfortunately it's a bit too damaged as well. How much do you pick something like this up for? Uh, well, I can't even remember, 30 bucks or something. away, I guess it's South Fremantle. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go to air. These are my oldest programs, uh, budgets. So it used to be called the WA Footballer back in the 20s. Yeah. So this is the WA Footballer from 1921. Um, so I'm like, really impressed that you can sort of suss these out and find them. Or uh, indeed that people still have them. I, I, d I did buy quite a large collection off a bloke who'd been collecting them since the 80s and, and right. they accounted for a lot of my earlier stuff. Mm. Um, especially the WA footballers, because these you just can't sort of find. Um, uh, so, yeah, th these ones all, all, all largely came from him, old Nipper Truscott, who's a, a legend of WA football. These little fellas. These little fellas. They're great, aren't they? So these are from, I, I think, the early 60s. They were made in Japan, and they made them basically for every sort of sport going around, and all they did was just painted a different name and, and, a, and, and the jumper differently. Except you're new to the football. Yeah, so they did them for baseball with yeah. a little oh, baseball. Right, right, right. They did them for rugby. Yeah. So you'll find the same football with a with a rugby, I think a rugby league club's name. So you're missing a few there, I think. I've only got two. They're hard to find. Um, they're, they're one sold recently for quite a bit of money and, and that probably makes them even harder to find once something sells for a bit of cash. The little Rigby's yeah. urchin, you'd remember. Oh, the Rigby uh, urchin, you'd remember yes. Paul Rigby. Yeah, so, of course I do. Uh, this was his urchin in the back of his, uh, his cartoons. Yeah. And... Um, the urchin was made by Derbyshire, which is a, a very famous WA pottery maker, back in, I think, the 50s this one was made. Um, it was made in white, and then they painted it, hand-painted in the colours of any team. You'll actually find them in amateur colours. Mm. Um, and I believe Bowen's actually bought a big lot of them and then uh, painted them in the waffle colours and sold them off from, uh, from their city store. Now, I'm leading towards this cupboard here. Mm -hmm. Fear and trembling. What's in there? Uh, everything. Um, you'll see there, uh, we've got the tins. What tins are these? So these are ice cream tins. I'm not old enough to remember when ice cream was in tins, but the, uh, the sides have football scenes. I don't believe this. And uh, the lids are in uh, waffle club colours. So the Claremont, South Fremantle, uh, East Perth. How old are these? 
60s, 60s, early 60s. So there's there's eight of those to find, and right. I, I haven't got eight unfortunately. All right. And looking higher, what's that well, strange the, thing? This boot's quite interesting. These were done in the early 80s when the waffle was uh, trying to make money out of marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they did, there were eight of these different colours. So this is the East Fremantle one, blue and white. Mm -hmm. Supposed to have an East Fremantle logo there, but it's come off with age. Mm -hmm. Again, oh. there you go. There's your, your uh, I think I think that was port originally, rather than wine or anything. I love it, I love uh, it. Very kitsch, but um, there you go. Oh, yes. Yeah, so talking through this. There's a whole lot of jumpers there that's uh, that's uh, Eagles jumper I've picked up recently. There's a whole lot of Eagles jumpers here actually. Um, my favourite I think is uh, is this one here which Steve Malaxis wore in 1987. Why is it your favourite? Um, well, it's actually a player-worn jumper from the Eagles' first season. It's even the Burswood sponsors logo. As opposed to? As opposed to when you got later, SGIO, Hungry Jacks. Okay. And it's also it's the yellow with the blue, whereas yeah. most of them, well, certainly later on, were the blue with the yellow. Right. This one, for instance, this is um, no, 31 for Subiaco, which is an old one, as you can see. So yeah. you haven't worn that in some time. Um, and... Sorry, 17, there you go. It's quite Signed by Mike Fitzpatrick. Right, right. I believe it was his jumper in the 70s. Um, and he gave it, I think, to, a, to someone who worked around the club and they held on to it until a few years ago. And then and they it comes to you. decided that they didn't want it anymore and, and on it came. Are you the only person who collects like this? No, no. There is quite a few waffle collectors, though I collect everything. Yeah. Um, and most waffle collectors... But you're indiscriminate, are you? Yeah, I am a bit. Um, it's maybe a hoarding mentality. What do people think of you as a collector? I mean, do they find it vaguely amusing? Or? I think a lot of people do. Yeah. yeah. I, I get teased about it a bit. Yeah. But it doesn't really What worry. do they say? Oh, you know, call me a nerd or something like that, but I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, but there's other collectors as well, um, you know, lots of other collectors who find it all quite interesting and, um, you know, we all compete for things. These are really old actually, these are um, turn of uh, last century, 1907, um, standard so, cigarette cards. So where do they come, with the, with the cigarette packs? They packet? came with the cigarette packs back in the day, yeah. Um, so they did these in black and white or sepia one year, Yeah. and then uh, the following year they did them in colour. Oh yeah, so how old are we here? Uh, so these are I believe 1908, there's 1908. still a bit of argument about what exact right, year they right. were, but about then. It's Football Life, which some people may remember from Victoria. Uh, it was run by the VFL. They published these back in the 70s and they go right back through to the... I've got some there from the late 60s and so I've got a full run of those now. I just wonder, are you spending a lot of money on this? Um, yeah, look, I do. Um, and I wonder sometimes whether I'm, I'm throwing, throwing money away largely because you don't know what it's going to be worth in the future. But are you doing it to that end? No, I'm not. No, no. and it doesn't really... That's why it's, it's not phasing me a hell of a lot as to whether yeah. I spend a lot of money or not. Yeah. Um, I like it, I, and a lot of it's just a matter of wanting to make sure that it doesn't sort of disappear and get thrown away. At this stage I can take some more, but I'm running out of room and I think it's uh, probably time to move house. <laughs> But before you do move house, let's go back to where we started. Sure. With that state jumper. Yep. And give me your expert view on what's going to happen in the state game. Uh, I think we're going to find it a bit tough. Now remember, Sean, this is going to wear at half time. Mm. Want to hazard a, a score line? Uh, You're on the record now. Oh, um, eight, six to seven, three. Don't ask me which way. Oh, but I do ask you which way. <laughs> oh, maybe Victoria just in front and hopefully us to come home really strongly in the second half.